Chris here from Tiny Home Tours and the Off Grid Schoolie. Today's video features Brad. He actually works with this channel. If you're at all interested in having your tiny home, whether it be a tiny home fifth wheel, whether it be a camper van, whether it be a tree house out in the middle of nowhere, if you want to be featured on the channel, get a hold of me. We both travel the country getting videos of different people's tiny homes. Also, if you happen to be around the Portland area, Brad, the subject of this video, the guy that helps get content for this channel, He's having an art show in Portland. That is July 5th through the 26th. He's a photographer. He travels the country just capturing the beauty of this country. Very talented guy. Uh, all the info will be linked down below. Thanks for watching and we will catch you Friday. I'm Brad and this is the Average Sportage. I live in my 2007 Kia Sportage and I live in it full time. I'm a graphic designer and photographer and I'm traveling across the US taking pictures and doing design work to make money and uh, this is my rig. So this is the rear. Um, I've got my water, cutting boards, cook, uh, plates, I've got a bowl back there, some uh, pots and pans and then here's my stove. To cook I have to lift up the bed, the bed folds up and comes out right here. This be then becomes a kitchen table or counter whatever you have it um, I pull out my stove open it up so the camping stove has a grate that's stored underneath you put it on top grab yourself a pan boom You've got a kitchen um, the only thing I would change about this is if it was about I don't know what is that a foot higher so I didn't have to crouch down um, but I'm fit just barely under this thing, so um, that's nice. And the only other times it's a pain to cook is either when it's raining or it's really cold outside. Other than that, it's simple. So if it's sunny, comfortable temperature like it is now, I don't mind cooking out here. It's great. Uh, sometimes I'll pull the cooler up, sit on it, or pull my, this is a chair here, pull my chair out, unfold it, sit down, and just have a little mini barbecue by myself. It's it's a good time. So the utensils are stored in here. I've got like a little uh, elastic netting. I've only got one knife, one fork, and a spork. These are all my utensils. Um, I use these every day. And they go here. I've got a little spatula that's in there as well. I have a pocket knife for quick cutting for anything. I did use it as my can opener for a really long time because uh, I was just too lazy to go buy a can opener, but I got one for free at the Van Life meetup the other day, which was pretty sweet. Uh, this is my other knife, cutting board. Again, all the stuff goes right here. Boom, cut away, cook. Yeah, so the cooking part, the hard, probably my least favorite part and the hardest part, I think this is anybody's, whether you live in a house or a mansion, a boat, car whatever is cleaning the dishes uh, but I don't have the luxury just to leave them in a sink so I have to clean everything at the time and I have to conserve water at the same time because this holds uh, what does it say 22 liters so that's um, in gallons not a lot that's five six gallons yeah so I have to conserve water and keep that as long as possible so you just fill up a little bit I have a scrub that also goes in with the utensils uh, where I have soap and I give it a little scrub with a little bit of water, dump it out, rinse it, dump it out, rinse it, and I recycle the water with the other pots, pans, bowls, whatever I use. Um, and once it's rinsed, then I uh, dry it off with paper towels or a regular towel, whatever is the easiest and the cleanest at that moment in time. Um, yeah, so everything goes away. Pan goes on top of the dry food. This is my dry food container plates cutting board knife everything goes here you just fold this down take the little legs put it over here and it slides perfectly back in its little home that's one thing about this car is everything has its home uh, if it doesn't go there then it's complete chaos in the car and i'm always frantically going where is it where is it where is it and also storage got to put as much stuff in a little tiny space as you possibly can. Uh, so the water lasts about a week on average between, I've had it last four days, just depending on how much I have to clean or sometimes it leaks, which is a pain in the butt, but that's only happened like twice. Um, or if I forget to 
tighten that down, it'll splash water out. Um, so that lasts about four days to seven days on average. So food storage, uh, I keep everything under here. I've got cliff bars, hot sauce, mustard, mashed potatoes, uh, everything right there that I need dry food wise. That lasts me, I really don't know how long the dry food lasts because you can eat it whenever you want. Mostly, most of the time when I go grocery shopping, it's based upon uh, fresh food that I keep in my cooler. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So that's mainly when I have to go to the grocery store and that's probably every four days because I have to get ice and more fresh food. If I want fresh food, it just all depends on what I'm eating. Oh, another thing that a lot of people ask is coffee. I also have this small little camper stove that I have and I absolutely love this and I actually cook this probably just as much or more as this stove if it, if I can do it in one pot because it's instead of setting it all up I just go boop there you go I've got a full on kitchen stove so I use um, this it's a Stanley stainless steel French press so I just fill it up with water set it on top boil the water got my coffee over here dump it in let it steep Put it there and pour it into your cup. Uh, it's pretty simple. I got this. I looked really hard for a stainless steel. Um, it's a Stanley. It's kind of dirty on the outside, but I looked really hard for just a stainless steel French press so it could all be in one so I didn't have to transfer it over, especially being in the car. That can be really difficult to transfer your one hot water into another container of hot water and that's just asking for trouble. So the storage under here um, it's not just a bed platform or a uh, kitchen counter, it's also storage. This is where the uh, spare tire used to go. And I got under here, I've got, this is what I call my basement. All my toys go in here of like my hobbies. I've got art box here with markers, paint, pencils, pens, anything you can ask for, uh, surfboard fins, leash, wax remover, um, I got a slack line, I got a bunch of climbing equipment, fishing gear, I got a fishing pole in there, it folds up. What else? Uh, jumper cables, those are important. Those have come in really big handy just because sometimes the battery will just die and I'm stuck somewhere and, hey dude, can you help me out? Um, for the most part, people are good. Uh, I also keep my trusty shovel under here, also some lanyards. Um, I keep my little trusty shovel. This folds up, folds out. So yeah, when I'm out in the woods, this becomes my bathroom. It's not luxurious, but it's pooping with a view. I love it. It's, I don't love it. I try not to do it, but it's necessary. My car jack's under there just in case I need that. Hopefully I don't. And then I have some other just like food and just other random things stuffed in there that I might need at some point in time in my life. Just never know. Yeah, and then when I'm done with everything, pull this back, pull the blankets back, and I've got a full bed again. Um, if you look in here on this side, this back side of the storage, I have my, my toiletry kit where I keep my medicine, my toothbrush, deodorant, just really anything you need. Baby wipes, because when you're on the road, Showers are rare, um, and these things keep you fresh for a little bit longer. And uh, that's about it on the back end of storage with the food and uh, in cooking areas. All right, so now we're inside the Sportage. This is storage. This is the uh, table that I, I built to be able to put my clothes are up on the top one on the top shelf. Uh, in the crates, so on this side I have pants, shorts, bathing suits, anything that goes on the lower half of the body. And then in this one I have everything that goes on the upper half of the body, as in shirts, long sleeve shirts, button shirts, I don't know, shirts. You know, <laughs> nothing too exciting. And then I've got right up here, this thing is a big bulky surfboard. I didn't have it for most of my trip because I was nowhere near the water, so I didn't bring a surfboard with me because it takes up a lot of space and it cut down a lot of storage I had in here because I would stack it up to the, um, not to the roof, but pretty close. Um, and also it prevents me from being able to put my head up right here. But to me, a surfboard is necessary. And I also turned it into a little shelf where I put my hats and scarves and jackets. And sometimes just, I got a bag right here that I put dirty clothes in 
fold it up and throw it in. So that's the surfboard. So yeah, it took up space, but it also gave me a shelf, which I think was pretty cool uh, and something I was not planning on. Um, like I said earlier, with something this small, you have to use whatever space you can for with whatever you have, because I'm not what you call a minimalist, but I try to keep down as much stuff as I possibly can because I'll fill up that spot. And then over here, I've got more storage. This is miscellaneous things. This is my, this is sunscreen. I got shampoo in there, first aid kit. I, I keep books in there, speakers, tape. Duct tape is a huge one. I always keep that within reaching distance because you never know what you need to duct tape. Yeah, that's just a uh, everything box. There's tools in there as well. It's called my junk drawer. Then here I've got, this is my electronics bin. So I keep, I'm a photographer and a graphic designer. So camera equipment is a big thing and computer stuff is pretty big as well. So um, that's all in here. We can show that later when we go to the other side because you can't pull it from in here. I can get to the stuff right here, which is easy to get, which I keep my, my film camera and within reach, my hard drives, and uh, just a notebook. So the most important things are at the front of these bins because I can pull them in and reach within this little tiny area. And then we'll move to some of the stuff. I kind of use the ledge as a storage area. So like my headlamp goes here. I have a carabiner with my bear spray because uh, when I was in Wyoming, I got bear spray Luckily I didn't have to use it, but it also is kind of a good safety feature to have in the car. So if somebody's trying to get at me, I can just spray them with bear spray. And then I have this, this knife. Uh, this is probably the only sentimental thing I brought on the trip, um, just cause I love it so much and I use it uh, and that stays there. So that's this side of the car. On this side of the car, this is my office. This is where I get work done. Um, I can lean back in my bed and type away. It's pretty nice. Yeah, it's pretty comfy and cozy. It's not a lot of room, but I think you learn if you're in here by yourself, you don't need very much room. It's like a little cozy cocoon. And then my office just goes back right here for another day of work. So the bed, uh, I got the bed on Amazon and it's a trifold memory foam mattress. It's probably one of the things I invested most in with doing this because I knew being in a small confined space that a really comfortable bed would make the make or break the entire trip. So uh, it folds up, but I usually only use the folding part to lift up the, uh, the back portion of the bed. And it's just wide enough because this is something to do with the car. I'm pretty sure it's the shock or the suspension that goes through right here. So this takes up a lot of room. This is actually kind of a pain in the ass for doing what I'm doing, but it's just the way it is. So this is the thinnest point and the bed is perfectly wide enough to fit in here. It was like the bed was made for this build out. Another one of the tricks that I had with the bed is I and the bed are too long for the normal build of this car. So we had to push the front seat all the way forward and I had to build a table to be able to make the length as long as it needs to be for me. And like, like I said, it just fits like a glove. I don't know how I got lucky, but I did. Really excited about how everything turned out with the bed because it could have been just a big pain in the butt and it wasn't, it was pretty pretty easy i've got the cardboard <laughs> cardboard shade because i didn't think i would use this window as much as i did when i backed out so i just permanently blocked this one out with a piece of cardboard i was going to paint it but just haven't gotten around to it so i cut out a piece of cardboard that fits in this window and i stuck it in there and so that blacks it out people can't peek in on me through this window um the other windows have curtains, but that one and the, the one on the other side, which you can't really even see, it also has a blackout um, cardboard on it. Other than just this, I have curtains that cover all the windows, um, even a divider. One covers the back window, and then I have some that cover these windows. So I'll show you how those work. 
Um, you close the door. Um, I have them on snaps. So you unsnap the curtain here, all three snaps, comes down, and then you just snap it to the door here and here. And that's some privacy. Uh, the other ones go all the way over, and then the divider will come run around through. And I got my map of the world. I love old maps, and to find fabric for these of old maps was pretty interesting. So I always find myself just staring at it and trying to find new cool things about it. That's probably one of my favorite things that I did with the build out was making that a map. So yeah, so then the divider curtain, which is probably one of the most important, it's run by Velcro, which goes up here and you just run it along. Again, the surfboard got in the way, but it's necessary. And yeah, tape it up like that and you can't see me. And then you pull it down in the morning. And then it just goes into a little spot right there. It's good to go. So, uh, like I said, we have to take the passenger seat and move it all the way forward. No one's riding in here with me anyways. And if they do, they ride in the bed. But uh, I had to push this all the way forward. And under here is the extender table that I've made. Um, it's kind of got some fuzzies on it from the bed. Um, but yeah, this is my table. Yeah, so this helps me sleep comfortably without being in a ball all the time and I can extend my feet out and it doesn't touch. Again, things got lucky. I'm six feet tall and I think the space is six one. So again, just got lucky with the whole thing. Also under here, I have my electronic components. So this lifts up and I've got my battery, a thousand watt inverter and a little power strip with my iPhone cord plugged in now. I mainly got it so I could charge my phone, my camera, and uh, my computer if I needed to. Uh, the power doesn't hold as long as I thought it would to do the computer all the time, but it gets the job done. Um, I can always start the car and charge the computer that way or just charge it while I'm driving, which is, which is nice. Uh, I don't have solar. I use a, a um, what is it called? A battery isolator that's underneath the hood that is charged through the uh, alternator. So, so yeah, gets the job done. I got power and electricity that doesn't have to do with the cranking battery because I need that more than really anything so I can drive from point A to point B. And that's my electrical system. Put this back down, make the bed back. A lot of this is moving things from one spot to the next spot to be able to get into the whatever you need to get into. You get used to it. So up here, we have my cooler where I keep my food that needs to be cold or fresh or whatever you wanna use it for. Uh, it's a Yeti cooler. It keeps ice for four days, depending, maybe three days for a bag of ice, but a block of ice usually lasts me about a week. So I try to find blocks, which are harder to find than you think they are. But uh, so yeah, you can just pop it in here, put your food, I got cheese, I got eggs, I got some leftovers in here. And it's like, I feel like this is MTV Cribs. Yo, this is my fridge. This is where I keep all my stuff, my snacks. Got them avocados all day. Yeah, so uh, right now there's a couple things in here, not too much, but it just keeps things fresh and it's an alternative to having a, you know, a refrigerator because um, I just don't have the, the power to, um, to run a refrigerator or a freezer, so I have to use this. And it works. I would say it's kind of a pain sometimes having to go, okay, I need ice, I need ice. And then sometimes you're just not in a place to do that and you kind of have to eat all your food or it goes bad. I feel like I've thrown out more food than I should have, um, unfortunately, but I eat more than I throw out a lot more. So. so to restock ice, that's probably the reason I go to the grocery store most of the time is for ice. Um, and I'll just restock it. A lot of things that I do as well is, uh, Grocery stores will throw things up on the shelves that are about to go bad within three to four days anyways. So usually I buy that because it's on super cheap sale and it just goes in with the ice. And so that 
that process of needing food and buying ice goes in within three to five days. So I'm at the grocery store quite a bit, but they're also a good place to use the restroom because most grocery store bathrooms are really clean and uh, I either use the woods or public bathrooms. So that's also a really good plus. So I like grocery stores. They're a good place and sometimes they're good time killers. Yeah, so up here I've got a skateboard, some extra snack food, some laundry detergent, uh, this little bar I have my extra like phone battery charger. It fits perfectly right there. Um, that's about it that's up front here. And then the door, I keep grocery bags that I use as my, my trash can that hooks to a carabiner on my trash can. So that's where I keep my trash is right up here. So try to stay as trashy as least as trashy as possible. And then this is an extra towel, which is great when you're in humid areas or it's cold because I use this to wipe down the window in the mornings because it gets, it gets, it gets foggy and steamy. So this is the cockpit. This is where I spend a majority of my time uh, because it's nice to sit straight up and it's a pretty comfortable seat. Also, I drive a lot uh, because I'm going from point A to point B to see different things to shoot. Um, I don't like staying in one place for too long, so having a very mobile vehicle is pretty cool. This is the Kia Sportage. The reason I have a Kia Sportage to travel in is because it's what I have at the time. I didn't have the money or anything to, to do van life with, so I took with what I got. And I had a Kia Sportage and I started building it out. And I think the entire build out, including the wood, all the camping supplies, the bed, electronics, I think I spent less than $400. So with the whole build out of the car and everything was less than $400 and I was on the road and I was traveling the country. Now gas is a different expense, but it's cheaper than rent. So that's pretty sweet uh, with the Sportage. This is a five-speed, four-cylinder um, engine. I think it's like two liters, maybe. I don't, I'm not quite sure, I don't remember. But uh, it's not very fast, but it gets the job done. Um, it is manual. I get over 20 miles a gallon. I don't know the exact, it changes just depending on where you're driving. So miles per gallon with the Sportage, not sure exactly what it is because I don't have a little calculator on it, but I do get about 300 miles a tank. And uh, I usually fill up when I hit a quarter of a tank because if you go under that, sometimes when you're in areas, you won't find a gas station within that quarter of a tank. So 300 miles, depending on the price of gas, in California, 300 miles is a lot more expensive than 300 miles back home in Florida, uh, which was about $30. So there for a while, when the gas is cheaper, it's about $10 for every 100 miles. So pretty economical, and I can go a long distance. So it's pretty sweet. Got a sun visor that doesn't like to stay up directly, so I have to like shove it up in there. My stereo sinks in the back. Just little imperfections that make it the car just make it what it is and I love it and I wouldn't change anything about it. Um, I've got my cups. These are only really the only two cups other than coffee mug that I have and they stay right here in each cup holder. So if you're in the car and you have a cup, too bad you got to hold it yourself. All right, so up top I have some extra storage. Mainly this storage was for my climbing crash pad for bouldering and my spare tire. Um, those are the two most important things that are up there but also I have a wetsuit to surf here in California because the water's freezing. I've got a tent if I wanna go backpacking. And then I've got some other clothes that I have in a dry pack up here for like winter clothes or summer clothes. We're in like a transition period, so I've got a good mix of what's in here for like cold weather and hot weather. But once I guess it gets hot, I'll probably pull everything that's under there and push everything that's warm weather up there. Uh, I've also got like a little tiny foam surfboard that I picked up along the way to surf when the waves are small and that's like shoved up under there. So this bag, I think it's a, yeah, it's called a keeper. I got it on Amazon before the trip. I like it. I would prefer a hard case up here, but this works and it was really cost effective. So this has only ever leaked on me once and I think it was because the crash pad wasn't in there and so the water just kind of like got up in there. Uh, 
I don't really like the strap system on it. It's kind of a pain in the butt to take on and off and to tighten down. Uh, but other than that, it's great. Gets the job done. My stuff stays dry and it gives me an extra bound of storage up here because there's not a lot in here. This is to get access into my bin, which I've got tracing paper, video lights, underwater camera, my film camera, a bunch of other lenses down there, uh, and some film, whatever. I got photo prints in here, so if you ever want to photo print, let me know. I've got, I don't know, probably 30 here. Come find me, I'll hook you up. Uh, my curtain stays down all the time here on this side, just because it became a pain in the butt to go in and out and it's honestly never in my way and it's just always down. So that stays there. I've got a spot right here for my tripod, some hammocks, some oatmeal, and then extra towels and then a beach blanket. And that's pretty much what's running on back here. Just pulling things out to get easy access to. Um, same thing with the, the crate, but I have to pull this one out to get into that crate, but I don't ever really go in there. So unless I need something, a big semi truck went by and it blew wind and it just went <laughs> and then I knocked I knocked this one off so this one I knocked off one day because I was standing on top of the car getting a photograph getting a high elevation I jumped off and my my heel hit it same thing happened with the uh, door handle on the other side I did the same thing with knocked that door handle off but I have these to be able to roll down the windows about this much at night if it's warm and I can get some ventilation in the car while I'm sleeping because that's also a big thing because it can get stuffy in there. Um, it could also get really cold so I have a sleeping bag and a blanket and that's been warm enough and I've been in 15 degrees Fahrenheit so as far as that is like I stay warm and I stay cool and if it's too hot I also have a fan that plugs right into my battery and it doesn't pull like any power. So I think there's only been like one night where I was too hot to sleep or too, and I was never too cold to sleep. So for the most part, it's been pretty good. All right, guys, that was the tour of the Average Sportage. Uh, my name is Brad, and again, thank you for watching. Uh, things that I'm doing right now, I am running my own brand, Tohu. This is one of their hats. Uh, I've got the Average Sportage on Instagram, at Average Sportage, and also YouTube. My business, Brad Booth Media, which is my freelance graphic design and photography business. Check that out as well. All those will be in the links at the bottom. Thank you guys for watching, and please check those things out and let me know what you think. Mm -hmm.